Welcome to my ultimate Battlefield 6 graphics optimization guide. In this video I'm showing you the performance impact together with visual examples of every single graphics setting in Battlefield 6. For this I set up a portal game with a couple of bots and performed benchmarks using two systems, such that we have performance metrics for both a GPU-bound system shown in blue as well as a very CPU-bound system here shown in orange. I will structure this video as follows. I will first cover all of the graphics quality settings, followed by the advanced graphics settings. Then we'll talk about a couple of camera settings such as the field of view and chromatic aberration, followed by display settings. And finally, we'll look at the SOWIS filter towards the end of the video. As always, make use of the chapters if you're only interested in a specific setting, or you can immediately jump to my conclusions where I'm going through my recommended best graphic settings for Battlefield 6. Beginning with texture quality, you can see the performance impact of this setting on my two benchmark systems on screen right now. The values that you can see on this graph are in the light colors the 1% lows, in the dark colors the average FPS, and towards the end of the bar in milliseconds the system latency. From this we can see that texture quality does not affect performance in Battlefield 6. This is not really surprising as texture quality simply increases the resolution of textures that are streamed to your GPU. So instead of looking at performance it's more insightful to look at the VRAM usage and here we can see that by increasing texture quality from low to high we're using a whopping 1.5 GB more VRAM, going to ultra uses another GB and finally overkill uses another 700 MB. Visually, the most obvious differences with these presets is between the low and high preset, with textures being much more blurry and low res on the low preset. The additional gigabyte of VRAM that Ultra uses primarily goes towards sharpening all of the textures, and finally the overkill preset is virtually indistinguishable from Ultra. Generally speaking, my recommendation would be that if you have 8 or more gigabytes of VRAM then use the high preset, and if you have less VRAM then stick to low. Texture filtering is as always a very light setting and therefore has no effect on performance on either of my systems. Visually I found that this setting much more improved the render distance of certain objects on the ground rather than actually improving texture filtering, so that is making textures that are viewed at a very shallow angle appear sharper. That's not really that much the case in Battlefield 6, however you'll get a slightly higher draw distance at a shallow angle. Because this setting does not affect performance whatsoever, my recommendation is to set this to the overkill preset. For mesh quality, we observe that the low and medium preset have essentially the same performance. High reduces performance by 1 to 3%, the ultra preset by 4%, and overkill roughly 7%. Visually, this affects the polygon count or the draw distance of higher resolution objects in the game. So certain faraway objects are completely missing on the lower preset and are only visible on a higher mesh quality setting. In this example here with the street under the Manhattan Bridge, the difference of mesh quality is also noticeable, with the emergency ladders being only partially completed on the lower presets and the bridge in the background getting a lot more details when we move to a higher mesh quality preset. Generally the difference between low and medium is almost unnoticeable, with high providing a nice boost in visual fidelity. Also note that it doesn't appear to be relevant whether you're GPU or CPU bound, both systems see roughly the same reduction in performance. So in my opinion, the high preset provides the best balance between visual quality and performance. Terrain quality only insignificantly reduces performance and is primarily affecting the bumpiness or the depth of the terrain. So if you want your game to look a bit more pretty then set it to ultra, or if you want the highest performance then leave this on low. On the growth quality is clearly bugged as I didn't observe any performance impact when increasing this setting and I was also not able to find any visual examples of how this is supposed to affect the vegetation of the game. Effects quality is quite a difficult setting to actually benchmark because it requires something that emits particles in order to affect performance. From this burning tank you can see that the performance difference is minimal if even significant and the primary difference that I found was that with high effects quality we get more of the spark effects. While this setting is unlikely to have a huge impact on performance, I would still recommend to leave this on low just to ensure that in situation with a lot of explosions we're not suddenly stuttering. Volumetric quality significantly reduces performance on my GPU bound system, whilst it doesn't seem to have much of an effect on my CPU bound system. 
Visually, this is supposed to improve the way that light interacts with particles in the scene. However, from my comparisons, you can see that this does not significantly affect visual quality, at least in the multiplayer portion of Battlefield 6. Because this setting doesn't really improve the visuals by much, and it has a huge performance impact, I would recommend to leave this on low. Lighting quality turned out to be a tricky setting. On Manhattan Bridge, I didn't find this to affect performance or the visuals. However, when doing more testing, I found that this would actually ever so slightly reduce performance on both New Sobek City and Mirak Valley. On New Sobek City, we can see that these AC units look much more lit up and just more natural with lighting quality high. While on the other hand, Merrick Valley is kind of a mixed bag, some assets get brighter, some get darker. For instance, this staircase becomes darker with lighting quality high, whereas when you just move over to the left, everything becomes much brighter with lighting high. So because in most cases, this option leads to less dark corners, and because the performance impact is not huge, I would recommend to turn this on. By the way, I pour my absolute heart and soul into producing these kinds of videos, and I invest pretty much all of my free time into bringing you the best possible content in this space. So if you're enjoying this video, then do me a favor and leave a like and a comment down below to help me compete against the absolute nonsense clickbait videos that are flooding YouTube. Also, if you want to join my community of optimization freaks, then subscribing comes at absolutely no cost while making me really happy. Local light and shadow quality had quite a significant impact on my GPU balance system, reducing performance by 6 to 8%, whereas the impact on my CPU balance system wasn't that noticeable. This setting increases the number of artificial lighting sources in the scene, as well as the number and resolution of the shadows caused by those dynamic lights. Generally, this option makes the game look a lot more dynamic, because we have a lot more shadows. However, at the same time, this also makes the game look a bit less readable, especially with players hiding in dark corners. So for that reason, and because it is quite a performance hog, I would recommend to leave this option set to low. Sun shadow quality cannot be discussed without also looking at shadow filtering, because one affects the other quite drastically. So let's begin looking at the performance impact of sun shadow quality with the less computationally expensive PCF shadow filtering. This combination quite drastically reduces performance, especially when going beyond the medium preset. And generally speaking, this is probably one of those options in Battlefield 6 that has the largest impact on performance across all of the different settings. As expected, this option increases the resolution of individual shadows and improves upon the very annoying pixelated shadows that we can see on the low preset. Additionally, we can see that the distance at which a high resolution shadow is drawn increases with higher sun shadow quality. When setting shadow filtering to PCSS, we can see that the performance impact is even greater. We are now losing up to 18% performance on the overkill preset on my GPU bound system and 4% on my CPU bound system. Visually, this improves sort of the diffusion effect of individual shadows, so shadows that are cast by objects that are further away from the ground become a bit more fuzzy and a bit more diffused, which is especially noticeable on this example here. Interestingly though, if you set your sun shadow quality to low, then both filtering methods result in the exactly same visual representation of shadows. A big issue that the PCSS filtered shadows have is that unless you're using any upscaling or anti-aliasing, shadows are very grainy and very sizzling, especially at certain distances. This can be super distracting, and because I don't think that these shadows really look that much better than PCF filtered shadows, I would recommend against using PCSS. Finally, when it comes to my overall recommendation in terms of sun shadow quality, I would say that I would recommend against using the low preset because the shadows are simply very pixelated and can be quite distracting in game. And if you have a bit of performance to spare, then you might want to go to the high preset for slightly better shadow resolution. But for anybody else, the medium preset is probably the best recommendation. Reflection quality poses a significant impact on performance, and here we can see that it has roughly the same performance impact both on my CPU and GPU bound system, meaning that if you're CPU bound, you should definitely leave this on low. This setting clearly improves the visual quality of reflections, and not just the reflections on the ground, but also the reflection quality on your gun. While this looks amazing, I don't think we spend our time in Battlefield 6 looking at pretty reflections, so therefore my recommendation is clearly to set this to low. Screen space reflection, once again, is a much more GPU bound setting. We can see I'm losing 5 to 10% on low and high respectively. On the other hand, my CPU bound system only drops by a couple of FPS. The implementation of screen space reflection, in my opinion, is not amazing, and those screen space reflections are super grainy. This is especially noticeable on open water, like on the Manhattan Bridge map, where reflections on low are basically unbearable. 
So if you like screen space reflections, you kind of have to go to high. However, since this comes with such a high FPS penalty, I would recommend against using screen space reflections at all. Post-process quality only makes sense to test if you have all the post-processing filter enabled, which in of itself already reduces performance by a couple of FPS. On the other hand, the setting doesn't seem to affect performance that much, and visually this also doesn't seem to affect the post-processing effect significantly. Screen space ambient occlusion and global illumination is as always a super performance intensive setting. This setting seems to be especially hard on the GPU, where I'm losing 6-7% with GTAO and 20-30% with screen space global illumination. The performance impact isn't as great on our CPU bound system, where in fact we could get away with using SSGI low. Visually, this adds additional shadows around objects and makes different objects much more grounded in the scene. On the other hand, with ambient occlusion disabled, everything looks extremely flat. A big disadvantage that ambient occlusion always brings is by introducing additional shadows, it makes regions of the game that are already shadowy and already dark even darker. Because of that, and because it has such an insane effect on performance, on a GPU-bound system you should definitely disable ambient occlusion, and if you're more CPU-bound you could experiment with enabling it if you just like the more grounded look. High fidelity objects amount doesn't have a measurable impact on performance, and even though the in-game overlay says it has a high impact on CPU, I don't see this behavior on my CPU bound system. This setting also only affects infantry and vehicles, so that's not that many assets, and it primarily affects the distance at which a high quality animation is played. So, because this doesn't have a performance impact, and because you're actually seeing a more smooth or more fluid animation of enemy soldiers, I would highly recommend to set this to Ultra. Moving on to the advanced graphic settings, I found that using a framerate limiter significantly increased my overall system latency. However, if you encounter consistent stuttering, then you might want to consider to enable the framerate limiter for a more smooth gaming experience. As I discussed in my last video, NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency seems to be bugged at the moment, because I'm getting exactly the same latency measurement with this disabled or enabled. So for now I would recommend to leave this disabled until this is fixed. Using anti-aliasing or some upscaling technique is almost necessary in Battlefield 6, because the native rendering of the game is super pixelated. Just be aware that this introduces quite a significant FPS penalty, up to 18% with the XESS anti-aliasing method. Visually, I would argue that the DLAA method looks the best out of all of these options, however I should note that I personally only have access to FSR 3 and therefore FSR 4 might look a little bit better than what you see on screen. Additionally, I would like to stress that any of these upscalers is going to introduce significant fringing behind fast moving objects as the upscaler has no way to know what is supposed to be behind that object. This will be especially relevant when looking at the upscalers, however I wanted to mention this here already at the anti-aliasing segment because I got a lot of comments about this on my last video. Finally, I would recommend against using DAA because it makes the game look extremely blurry. However, instead of one of the anti-aliasing options, you can always use one of the upscaling techniques. However, upscaling brings absolutely no performance benefits if you're super CPU bottlenecked. But while there is no performance improvement to be had on a CPU bottlenecked system, you can still use one of the upscalers in the quality preset in order to get essentially free anti-aliasing. On the other hand, on a more GPU bound system, the LSS brings quite significant improvements in performance while making the game look a little bit softer. In my opinion, the balanced preset gives you the best balance, as the name suggests, between performance and visual quality. However, if you're not happy with the more soft look of the game, and if you want to get rid of almost all of the fringing, then use the quality preset for still a small boost in performance while introducing nice anti-aliasing. If you don't have an NVIDIA GPU, you can always use FSR, and I just hope that you have a 9000 series GPU, because only then you're able to use FSR 4. I personally only have a 7000 series AMD GPU, which is why the comparisons that you're seeing here are using FSR Free. As you can see, the visual quality is much worse when compared to the LSS, however we are getting slightly more performance on all presets. Finally, there's XESS, which I am personally not the biggest fan of. It does provide a quite nice uplift in performance, however at a poor visual quality. In any case, I would recommend against going above the quality preset, because in that case you're actually losing performance at essentially the same visual quality as the native rendering. 
NVIDIA Frame Generation does a decent job in boosting the performance of your game, however this comes with almost a doubling of your system latency. For that reason, I would highly recommend against using frame generation and instead use one of the upscaling techniques, as those do not add input latency, in fact they're able to reduce input latency by simply making the game run at a lower resolution. Future frame rendering doesn't significantly affect performance from my testing, however as the text says, this adds a bit of system latency. As the goal in any FPS game is to have the least amount of input latency, I would recommend to turn this off. Moving on to camera settings, where I first want to talk about the field of view. Now historically, everybody thinks that having a lower field of view gives you higher performance, which is absolutely not the case in many modern multiplayer games. The reason for that is that those games actually have a scaling factor with your field of view, where faraway objects are actually rendered at a lower resolution if you have a higher field of view, and thus the game usually runs smoother at a higher field of view. Clearly this is a very personal choice, but just know that setting this to a low value doesn't necessarily improve your performance. Interestingly, chromatic aberration does have a measurable impact on performance, especially on my GPU-bound system. This option adds kind of this color fringing at the borders of your screen, and I personally really hate this. The vignette setting doesn't affect performance, and just adds a bit of darkening to the corners of your screen. From this comparison, we can see that vignetting actually significantly reduces these super bright areas of the game, and therefore I'd actually recommend to leave this setting on if you also struggle with the bright visuals in Battlefield 6 and like to tone down the brightness a little bit. Finally, film grain does not have an impact on performance, and the difference visually is super subtle. Moving on to the display settings, and first I want to talk about the full screen mode. As you can see, I even got slightly better performance when running the game in the borderless mode. Additionally, the old myth of full screen having better latency is also busted, as I'm getting consistently better latency figures on the borderless mode. Additionally, this allows you to alt-tab faster, which is why this would be my recommended setting. Full screen resolution, you want to select the highest number here, so this is your native monitor's resolution. Aspect ratio, leave on auto and disable VSync unless you're experiencing significant screen tearing. However, as expected, enabling VSync does in fact increase latency. Finally, let's talk about the Soldier Visibility filter, which unsurprisingly does not affect performance at all. This filter adds a bit of a glowing effect to soldiers, but only if they're stood in a dimly lit environment. Now when testing this, I noticed that with the Phantom Edition skin, the effect is actually quite significant. As you can see from this example, anybody that has this skin equipped is sticking out like a sore thumb. Also, this sort of halo effect seems to become less and less pronounced the closer you are to a player, so at this distance we can see the halo effect, when moving a little bit closer it almost disappears, and then again becomes much more pronounced when moving quite far away. When toggling it on and off, you can see that the difference is actually quite significant, and on top of that the effect appears much more obvious when you have a dark skin equipped. Clearly the bright skin is just more obvious in this scene, however the halo effect increases the contrast between the player and the background and therefore in my opinion makes this much more obvious than the example with the bright skin. So there you have it, those are my recommended best settings for Battlefield 6 to get the highest possible performance at the best visual quality. Now beyond tweaking your in-game settings, you can do a lot more to your Windows settings in order to boost performance in Battlefield 6. I already produced a whole video on rebar, game mode, hardware accelerated GPU scheduling, as well as a bunch of configuration tweaks that you can do to your config file in Battlefield 6 to further boost your performance. If that sounds like something you're interested in, then check out the video on screen right now. But until next time, have a wonderful day, and I'll see you guys in the next video.